Well, it looks like Blue Origin's new Glenn is gonna surprise SpaceX Starship fans with a Mars launch before Starship's 11th flight. Yes, you heard that right. Hey, I'm Lucas. Welcome to the SpaceX community. Let's get started. Standing at an impressive 320 feet tall when fully stacked, New Glenn boasts a reusable first stage powered by seven BE-4 engines, which Blue Origin developed in-house. These methane-fueled engines deliver a combined thrust of over 3.8 million pounds, enabling the rocket to carry up to 45 metric tons to low Earth orbit. As of October 2025, the focus is on the second flight of New Glenn, a mission that carries NASA's twin escapade probes to Mars. This launch not only builds on the successes and lessons from the inaugural flight, but also marks a pivotal moment in demonstrating the rocket's reusability, a key factor for cost-effective space travel. With the current date being October 9th, 2025, Preparations are intensifying at Cape Canaveral, Space Force Station's Launch Complex 36, LC-36, a site Blue Origin has leased and upgraded specifically for New Glenn operations. Recapping the first flight provides essential context for understanding the stakes of the second. On January 16th, 2025, New Glenn made its maiden voyage, designated NG-1, from LC-36. The payload was a prototype of Blue Origin's Blue Ring spacecraft, a versatile orbital platform designed for satellite hosting and maneuvering. Liftoff occurred smoothly, with the seven BE-4 engines igniting to propel the rocket skyward. The vehicle successfully reached orbit, inserting the Blue Ring prototype into a targeted elliptical path of approximately 2,400 kilometers by 19,300 kilometers at a 30-degree inclination. This achievement marked Blue Origin's entry into the orbital launch market and the first launch from LC-36 since 2005. However, the mission wasn't without challenges. The first stage encountered propulsion issues post-separation, preventing a controlled re-entry and landing attempt. As a result, the booster was lost at sea, providing valuable data, but underscoring the complexities of reusability on a debut flight. The first flight's partial success. Orbital insertion, yes, recovery no, highlighted Blue Origin's cautious approach. Unlike SpaceX, which iterated through multiple failures with Falcon 9, Blue Origin opted for extensive ground testing before flight. The decision to attempt recovery on the debut was bold, but the propulsion anomalies, details of which remained sparse, halted that plan. Engineers analyzed telemetry data extensively in the months following, identifying software glitches and hardware tolerances that needed refinement. This post-mortem was crucial, as reusability is central to New Glenn's economic model. Each first stage costs over $100 million to build, making recovery essential for profitability. The flight also validated the BE-4 engines, which had been a bottleneck in development and demonstrated the rocket's payload fairing separation and upper stage performance. Moving to the present, preparations for the second launch, NG-2, are in full swing. On October 8, 2025, Blue Origin rolled out the first stage booster, affectionately named Never Tell Me The Odds, from its hangar at Rocket Park to LC-36. This rollout, captured in dramatic video footage, signifies the start of the final pre-launch campaign. The booster, transported horizontally on a specialized crawler, was erected vertically on the pad for integration with the second stage and payload. A static fire test is next on the agenda, where the seven BE-4 engines will be briefly ignited while the rocket remains anchored, verifying ignition sequences and thrust vector control. This test is critical, as it simulates launch conditions without actual liftoff. The payload for NG-2 is NASA's Escape and Plasma Acceleration and Dynamics Explorers, Escapade Mission, 
consisting of two identical small sat orbiters built by Rocket Lab. Named Blue and Gold, these probes arrived at Florida's Space Coast on September 22, 2025, and are undergoing final checks before encapsulation in New Glenn's payload fairing. Once launched, the duo will journey to Mars, arriving in about 11 months to study the planet's atmosphere, plasma environment, and interactions with solar wind. This data will help scientists understand how Mars lost its water over billions of years, informing future human exploration. The mission, valued at $79 million, represents NASA's confidence in New Glenn, despite its nascent flight history. Integration of the payloads is a meticulous process. The escapade spacecraft are mounted on a dispenser that will release them after the second stage achieves the desired trans-Mars injection trajectory. Blue Origins teams are coordinating with NASA and Rocket Lab to ensure compatibility, including vibration testing and thermal simulations. The launch window, tentatively set for November 9th to 11th, 2025, is driven by orbital mechanics to optimize the probes path to Mars. Weather and range safety at Cape Canaveral will also play roles, with backups extending into early December if needed. One of the most significant differences from the first flight is the emphasis on booster recovery. For NG-1, recovery was attempted but aborted due to issues. For NG-2, Blue Origin is optimistic, with internal estimates pegging a 75% chance of success. The never-tell-me-the-odds booster will separate about three minutes into flight, then perform a boost-back burn to orient itself for re-entry. It will descend tail-first, using grid fins for steering and a final engine relight for a soft landing on the drone ship Jacqueline, positioned several hundred miles downrange in the Atlantic Ocean. Jacqueline, a converted offshore platform supply vessel, features a large landing deck, thrusters for station keeping, and autonomous positioning systems. This recovery attempt incorporates lessons from NG-1's anomalies. Software updates have refined flight control algorithms, and hardware tweaks addressed propulsion reliability. While specific differences between the first and second vehicles aren't publicly detailed, the second booster benefits from production line improvements, including enhanced manufacturing tolerances and sensor redundancies. Blue Origin's experience with New Shepard's suborbital recoveries, now at 36 flights as of October 2025, has informed the process, though orbital velocities present far greater challenges. What's new in this mission extends beyond hardware. The naming of the booster, never tell me the odds, a nod to Han Solo from Star Wars, reflects Blue Origin's cultural flair, boosting team morale. Additionally, this flight introduces operational reusability goals. If recovered, the booster could fly again within 90 days on NG-3, potentially carrying the Mark I lunar lander prototype. This rapid turnaround is ambitious, drawing parallels to SpaceX's Falcon 9, which took years to achieve similar cadence. Blue Origin is also expanding its infrastructure, with plans for additional landing ships and a second launch pad at LC-36 to support higher flight rates. Expected outcomes for NG-2 are multifaceted. Primarily, a successful launch would deploy the escapade probes on their Mars trajectory, fulfilling NASA's objectives and validating New Glenn for future government contracts. Recovery of the booster would be a game-changer, proving the system's economic viability and paving the way for commercial payloads. Analysts predict that, with reusability, launch costs could drop below $100 million per flight, making Blue Origin competitive in the satellite market. However, risks remain. Propulsion failures, as seen in NG-1, or adverse weather, could scrub the attempt. Blue Origin's engineers, Many with SpaceX backgrounds are leveraging that expertise to mitigate these. Thanks for watching today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for another great video tomorrow.